All right, Dr. York, Roma Dunze has a strain. Is there a difference between a sprain and a strain when it comes to the MCL? Um, I think it's sprain. The sprain. I think anytime you tweak the uh, MCL, there's either a tear or a partial tear. Okay. Three, and the MCL obviously is on the inside of the knee, mm -hmm. and it runs from the head of the femur to the head of the, I believe that's the tibia, if I'm not mistaken, Carm. And so it attaches and I, inserts. I get the tibia and the either. fibia confused. Yeah, the weight bearing bone. Whatever. The one that that bears all the weight is yeah. the tibia, uh, and it's basically a band there that uh, keeps your uh, leg from going left and right. You know, from wobbling, if you will. Yeah. So valgus, like if you get hit from the outside, the MCL helps keep you intact. You get a force that comes from the outside, and your knee wants to bend inward like that. That MCL is what keeps it tight and taut. Uh, the, the sprains could be a grade one or grade two tear. Uh, the if it's grade one, it's a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks tops. If it's a, a grade two tear, you're looking at six weeks, most likely. Oh boy, four to six week type of injury. Uh, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be much of a problem as you move forward. They never perform surgery on this type of no, MCL they don't. Right? They don't do that anymore. So they'll brace it. Usually they'll brace it, and this heals itself. You're to keep it, it. It'll heal itself. But what's the key to medial stability? I've always told you this. The key to medial stability, stability in the is, knee. Hold on. The key to medial stability inside is uh, strong quads. The one muscle, yes, but the it's the specifically tibialis oblique. No, it's the vastus medialis the vastus oblique. Me the VMO. The VMO. The, the VMO. Teardrop, the teardrop that you can find. On the inside of your thigh as it dives into your knee. That yeah. teardrop right there. I feel it. Right. The so VMO. it's that teardrop. That's the key to your medial stability. Yeah. So there's going to be a slew of quad sets ahead for our guy, Roma Dunze, probably with a little weight on it. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, the most important 5 to 10 degrees you have is terminal extension. So if you were sitting on a training table and your heel was on the ground and the guy said, stiffen up your quad, You'd stiffen your quad, and your heel would lift off the ground. Right. Yeah. That's called terminal extension. That yeah. is those five degrees that really stresses the vastus medialis oblique, and that's how you strengthen it hmm. by doing a ton of quad sets with weighted quad sets. So you hold for six seconds, you let it drop. Hold for six seconds, let it drop, and you end up developing that VMO, the vastus medialis oblique. So that's what he's got ahead for him. Uh, not a serious injury. But one that you want it to be able to come back completely healed so you don't screw around with it again. And so it doesn't create bigger problems down the line. So the chances of Roma Dunze playing this week are? Are slim and none. Slim to none. Yeah, I'd give him at least two weeks. Because if he woke up, I mean, he continued to play on it. Yes. But he woke up the next day and felt the symptoms where, you know, a little stiffness, a little swelling, some what we call point tenderness. Right. Where you go on the point and it's tender right on a specific point, probably the partial tear. Well, you don't want to screw around with that because if that opens up and he does tear it, you're susceptible to an ACL injury too. So you want to be very careful with it. So I'd say two, I'd say three weeks. You're not going to play in Houston. You're not going to play in Indianapolis. But that next week after that, I believe Roma Dunze will be ready to play. So can you live without Roma Dunze for two weeks? They're you're going to have to. You're going to have to. You're not going to have a chance. And, and my God. Uh... And the great Valus Jones Jr. will be here for us now. Do we need to see more out of this offense? I mean, what the film is even. Uh, but we I mean, got Valus. Wow. Valus I mean, isn't, a, isn't a wide receiver. No, he's both. He backs up both positions. I guess, like you said, he they does. put him at the bottom of the. He's the 53rd guy in the yeah, roster. Right. He right put now. him at the bottom and he sort of, he could check uh, two boxes. That's like that. right. You check two boxes. Well, and when I say 53rd guy in the roster, that's probably correct. But like the 45th active player. Right. Because yeah. because he could back up those two positions, they they created some versatility out of him. Because what he's done hasn't been worth anything. So at least his versatility allows him to stay active during game day. Uh, I mean, it's hard to even know like who to blame fully for Roma Dunce. No, 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 no. Nobody. The, it happened. The crap sandwich of uh, they served us up of offense on Sunday. I mean, how I, bad the I, line I give you was, the combination. like how, how, the, how the inaccurate Caleb line, was at times. The offensive line, the, the inexperience of Cable, Caleb Williams, son of what? Well, hey, at what point does your offense coordinator realize uh, the, the, the blank show that he's got going on with his offensive line? I can't put my quarterback in harm. Now I might have to change what I want to do because of what's happening out there. I mean, the, the, you know, who wouldn't adjust? The, the fact Harm, that you have to adjust. I know, I understand that. But so it's, it's hard to totally blame it because 
there was never any real rhythm or flow to anything they were uh, doing. There was any. that out and up was a, a good rhythm throw. No, no, the seven I'm, I'm talking about like had. your sustained drive. Oh, I get it. They I, didn't really have but there many was, sustained there drives. There was missed opportunities. A hundred percent. That's the problem. There were missed opportunities because of the missed opportunities. You don't get a chance to have sustained drive. That's right. That's right. You're right. And that's what I'm saying. Like, it's yeah. so hard to pin this on one right. person or one unit. And it's so hard to figure out like, wait, what exactly did go wrong? I know this. Cole Komet shouldn't only have 48% of the snaps. 48 uh, I, snaps or 48% of the snaps? Uh, he had 48% of the snaps. Okay. Yeah. So if the offense yeah. was on the field for 60 plays, he was on for 29 plays. Yeah, something, so something like, like that. You're almost, you almost hit it right uh, on the head, yeah. actually. You're not too far off. Uh, Gerald Everett had like seven more snaps. Uh, I don't know why we're usually you're the tenth highest paid tight end in the league. Doesn't ride the pine behind. That's what I'm saying. Shane Waldrop's favorite uh, tight end, I guess. Thank you. No, I understand. Like, what that you're was saying. weird. Um, you know, Caleb's inaccuracy at times and some of the the, the footwork issues that Matt Eberflus himself talked about. You know, not nervous. I sure hope it was nerves because how else do you explain it? I, you know, I know, oh, I don't get nervous. I really hope it was nerves because I don't know how, how else you explain away what we saw and maybe just opening day jitters and they'll get it all corrected and figured out real quick. Eddie on the North side. What's up, Eddie? Good guy. So man, Brock, Purdy, I can't, he throws balls like right in the numbers. You know what I mean? It, it, it's incredible. He looked like Aaron Rodgers. A uh, Monday night, and the uh, Rodgers look like oh, who knows? But what's Cleveland gonna do with this Deshaun Watson? I have no He's idea. He's all over the news again. I, if I were Cleveland, I'd be using this as uh, Eddie. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I don't think this is an overreaction. Maybe it is. Maybe this is the definition of it. And you're like, come on, you're the one who always saying you can't overreact. Maybe this is a great overreaction. Uh, if I'm Cleveland, I'm thinking long and hard about changing my quarterback. I'm sorry. I, I ranted on this a little bit yesterday. This isn't one game. This is, you know, he's been there two plus years now. He's had a tough time staying healthy. When he's on the field, other than about six quarters last year before he got hurt, he's looked largely terrible. Physically and mentally, both. He looks broken. That team is way too talented to waste opportunities and to waste a window with that defense and them, some of the skill they have on that team. I, I know yesterday, I, I know Sunday was a really bad look because you know you're he, he's terrible right now and your two tackles are out. That stinks for anybody. I get it. But I, now this latest lawsuit, I'm thinking long and hard of, uh, about. Well, they got two and a half more years of pain. Oh, well, I know, I know, York. I mean, you're yeah. stuck. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. You're stuck paying him. I'm thinking long. you went out and you got Jameis Winston for a reason. And you say what you want about Jameis. Yurko's always said it. You know, he's far from perfect and he's pretty flawed, but he's probably better than Joe Flacco. And look what they were able to do with Joe Flacco last year. Now they got their, they got boat raced in the playoff game. I understand, but you know, there's no reason that shouldn't be a 10 win team back in the playoffs. And honestly, you're great overreaction. Maybe I am overreacting. Honestly, I think they get there easier with Jameis Winston playing quarterback over Deshaun Watson. And I, I, if I'm them, I'm using this as an opportunity to be like, uh, go sit down. Uh, that's me. But well, What's the lawsuit about here? This is another one, not a masseuse this time, but it's uh, a lawsuit that was filed by a woman in, in Houston. You could go through and read it. It's, it's very similar to some of the uh, bizarre and unsettling details from the first uh, set of lawsuits, except this wasn't in a professional masseuse situation this was uh, he was on a first date well he's got a thing for getting massaged naked that's uh there's a, he's got a weird thing well i mean you know sometimes uh, that's the go-to move sometimes it's get naked and see what happens weird, i don't know very weird uh doesn't work for me no never worked for me. not me either i don't yeah. want to be naked for a massage the more close i well i i had a massage today i was naked for you get all naked all box the, the, take uh, everything the massage therapist has a technique with a bed sheet of working on the, the the part of the body she wants to work with and keeping everything else covered. I still keep my boxers on. Uh, not, well, not you me. take everything I've off been with her. the same person for the last six years. I know. So, I mean, there's a trust factor there. I like having my boxers on. I don't know. Okay. 
Call me weird. <laughs> well, I mean, you do whatever you want. I mean, Carm, whatever you want. I'm just I like having you. my jeans yeah. on too. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, jeans. <laughs> three, one, two, three, you three, go two. In there with a full body suit. You look, uh, you look uh, like a race car driver when you go in there. Our buddy Billy Zurichat, who's uh, a, he's a social media star now, and he's got his Sunday Squares uh, feature with all his great pizza back for uh, Bears Weeks. I mean, he's like partnered up with the Bears on this thing now. Uh, Muscular, just free month, is this month. He's in studio with us next just to talk about the cause and talk about Sunday Squares and some of the fun stuff he's doing on his Instagram and on social media. Tom Thayer joins us at one. I can't wait to talk to Th Tom about what he oh, saw from offensive that offensive line. line. Yeah. Uh, Thayer, but, you know, Thayer was super excited last week. Notre Dame won. You know, you were getting ready for the start of the NFL season. The Bears won, but the O-line was terrible and Notre Dame lost at home to Northern. Something tells me Tommy's going to be a little salty at one o'clock. We'll talk to Tom at one. It's Carmen and New York. We'll be right back.